Hi, my name is Dana DiTomaso. I'm president and partner at Kickpoint, and I'm presenting at Measure Summit, which is September 28th, October 1st. I'm going to be talking about measuring content success and how page views probably aren't as awesome as you think they are. See you there. So today I'm talking to you about the idea of measuring content success, which I think is a topic that a lot of people struggle with because we spend so much of our lives making content. This right now, this is content but we're not necessarily sure whether or not this content was actually successful. This is the main question that people ask themselves, especially if you've been blogging for years and years now, you know, I work with clients who sometimes blogging for 12 years. They have hundreds of posts, sometimes thousands. They have no idea what's good, what's bad. Do we keep all of this? Do we dump some of it? What is actually successful? And how do you measure that? I think that's a big question that a lot of people have with regards to content. And I think more often than not, this is what ends up happening, right? Is you know, like page views, this is success, right? We're not all Buzzfeed, so page views aren't necessarily a measure of success. This is not an ideal way to measure success. Because page views only really tells us approximately, let's say one one thousandth of the story. You may already know this, but I think a lot of the time people aren't seeing the issues with incompatibilities between how tools like Google Analytics measure page views and how actual real people not just us, but, you know, actual real people who don't work in digital marketing or analytics or anything like that actually use the internet. So for example, this may be a common site for you. This may be your browser at this very moment. You may have many, many tabs open. You know who you are. <laughs> and this isn't just a problem on desktop. It's also an issue on mobile. Um, and maybe you've done this test as well, but I've done tests in Google Analytics in both GA4 and Universal. So this is endemic to all Google Analytics. Uh, let's say, for example, I have an Android, and so I use Chrome browser on my Android. I open up my website, go to a page, and then I might open a second tab in Chrome on my browser or in my on my phone. And then what I'll do is I'll just close Chrome entirely. Well, if you watch the real-time view, eventually you'll drop off from Google Analytics. Great, that's what should happen. But then if you reopen Chrome and then you look at the tabs, just look at the tab view, don't actually activate the tab you'll see a new session pop up in analytics, even though you didn't actually do anything to make that session happen. You didn't go to the page. You just checked in on the existence of this tab and that is sending a page view off to Google analytics. Super helpful. Same thing happens on desktop. If you have lots of tabs and then you close your laptop for the day, open it back up in the morning, open Chrome or really any other browser, the browser will send essentially a keep alive to all these different websites. And then that does record as a page view, even though it is absolutely totally not. So how do you eliminate these ghost page views? This is, I don't know if there's a technical term for them. This is what we have decided to name them. They're not real, but there's evidence of them. They exist, they're counted. They look like real page views, but they might not be. And there's definitely a few things we can look at here to hopefully identify them and ideally eliminate them from our measurement because I mean, you could include them. Maybe it makes you look really good, but if we're really thinking about the idea of analytics as, you know, fairness and, and giving a level playing field to really truly determine what is successful, you kind of have to say, well, you know what? I can't possibly count the fact that someone happened to have this tab open in their browser for six months and every day gave me a page view as actual content success. So in that case, um, you could look at the session duration. But this only works if you actually have some sort of timer event, say through Google Tag Manager, that'll go off after a specific interval if someone is actually still active on the page. Otherwise, a duration isn't going to be measured. Um, and hopefully you're familiar with this concept. I don't want to get too deep into this, but the idea that if you don't have any other events firing on the page, then Google Analytics will have no idea how long that person actually spent on the page, regardless if it's one minute or if it's 10 minutes. And so what you'll end up with, if you look in analytics and you sort if you put in the secondary dimension of session duration, you'll see a lot of these zero second sessions. They existed, or did they? And a lot of these, I think, are people hoarding their tabs. So a better way to look at this would be to use this technique from Simo Ahava. I'm sure I will not be the first or the last person to talk about one of his posts and presentation, but this post in particular, and I included the link here so you can go visit it when you take a look at the slides. Um, this technique is really great at measuring how people are using your website in terms of tracking browser behavior. So this method uses custom dimensions and you can eliminate page views from the analysis that are a result of a reload navigation type in an existing tab. The way that this works is that the recipe is saying, when you're viewing a page on the site, did you get to it through navigating to it? Like, did you click something to get there? 
Did you get to it through reload? So did it reactivate a sleeping browser? Or did you get to it from the back or the forward? And Simo outlines in his article, there's some ways that don't 100% measure, but generally this works. And then the second question is the tab type. So the existing tab versus a new tab. If it's a reload navigation event in an existing tab, that means that it's probably someone who's just activated their browser again, and you happen to be one of the hoarded tabs in there. So then if you put this into Google Analytics using these custom dimensions, and then pull this into Google Data Studio, you can use this kind of filter on a chart in Google Data Studio to eliminate these page views from the analysis entirely, and then only show the page views that didn't actually correspond with that condition. So in this case, we have exclude tab type equal to existing and exclude navigation type equal to reload. And note the case there, the, the case is important for this kind of filter. So then what you can do is use a blend of Google Analytics with itself, with Google Analytics. The Google Analytics on the left has the filter that excludes those page views, the one that we just made. So these are the page views we don't wanna see, the reload an existing tab, and the other GA includes them. Make sure to rename the page view metric. I usually call one of them, you know, filtered or not, uh, so that you know which page view was related to tab hoarding and which one was not related to tab hoarding. Then you can put all this together in a table. For example, a table like this. And then you can add a calculated field to figure out what percentage of page views on that page are likely from people who I affectionately call tab hoarders. I'm not a tab hoarder, but a lot of you I'm sure are. I'm sure some of you right now are like, yeah, 68 tabs open. I just, I have the Marie Kondo philosophy about tabs. Like if that tab doesn't bring you joy, just close it. And I am very much a close the tabs, clean off your desk kind of person. So anyway, if you're not, that's fine, but you're counted in here. So this calculated field is very basic. You're really just looking at a percentage. Page views, minus filter page views, by all page views. That's all we wanna see. And so you can style the data however works for you. I like to use a heat map for this kind of uh, measurement because then it's super clear what's coming up. You'll see heat maps a few times this presentation. I'm a big fan of using heat maps in uh, tables in Data Studio. And so for example, you can see I had to block out the page names because this is client data. But if you look at uh, row number two, you can see there that 55% of the people on the page are tab hoarders. And then row 10, 75% of the people were tab hoarders. Those are pages where it actually kind of makes sense for those to be tab hoarders. Number two is a careers page and number 10 is a page where they're often posting promotions. So it 100% makes sense that there would be lots of people hoarding those tabs and that actually is kind of a measure of success for those pages. The client in this case was actually happy to see that people were hanging on to these tabs and keeping them open all the time because in that case, they do want people to come back again and again. And yeah, it's a new session, but it's also you know a measure of success for this particular client in those specific situations. So that's one way to look at it. Another question related to this, especially for companies who've been blogging for a really long time, as I mentioned, some clients have been blogging for you know over 10 years now, how can you rate posts in a level playing field? Of course, posts that have been around forever have lots of page views just because they've been around forever. But what about posts that are real up and comers? How do you measure those equally? If you look at all your posts since the beginning of, you know, when you first set up Google Analytics way back when, up until yesterday, obviously the posts that have been around for 10 years are gonna have more page views. And if they don't, definitely delete that post, but you know, most of them will have more. And in that case, how do you actually say, compare Apple to Apples when it comes to this sort of thing? So we do this using a Google Sheet. You could also use an RSS feed. Um, and all you need is the URL and the published date. Hi, my name is Dana Dietmas. So I'm president and partner at Kickpoint, and I'm presenting at Measure Summit, which is September 28th, October 1st. I'm going to be talking about measuring content success and how page views probably aren't as awesome as you think they are. See you there.